Yoshikazu Goto, and the title is Duration of Resuscitation Efforts and Survival After, uh, after Out-of-Hospital Cardiac Arrest. It is an observational study. Thank you, Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm happy to invite me this uh, special occasion. Uh, to, uh, today, I would like to talk about re our recent study concerning uh, out of hospital, especially in a jury of uh, resuscitation effort. Uh, first of all, I would like to talk about the background and the purpose. The decision regarding to when to stop resuscitation efforts for patients with out-of-hospital cardiac arrest is one of the biggest challenges for emergency medical service EMS personnel and or uh, clinicians. Moreover, the appropriate duration of cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR, remains unknown. Clinicians have also raised concern that prolonged resuscitation efforts might actually be futile. In this study, we investigate how long CPR should be conducted to achieve maximum survival and favorable neurological outcome. I have nothing to declare. Uh, let's see the method. Uh, this study was two year long nationwide population based conducted in Japan. We analyzed the records of 70,238 adults who experienced pre-hospital return of spontaneous circulation, ROSC, after EMS treated out of hospital cardiac arrest. The endpoints were one month survival and one month favorable neurological outcome. Oh, I shall now show the results. One month survival rate was 37%, and one month favorable neurological outcome rate was 22%. Please view figure one on the left. This figure shows the result of CPR duration and outcome. CPR duration was defined as the time from the initiation of CPR by EMS personnel to pre-hospital return of spontaneous circulation. As you can see the result, CPR duration, duration was significantly lower in case of survivors than in non-survivors. Moreover, the time was significantly shorter in case of patient with favorable neurological outcome than in unfavorable neurological outcomes cases. Please view figure two on the right. This figure shows the odds ratio of CPR duration for one month outcome, survival and favorable neurological outcome. As you can see this figure, uh, CPR duration was significantly associated with decreased one month survival and one month favorable neurological outcomes. This slide shows the dynamic probability of one month outcome. Horizontal line indicates the CPR duration. The dynamic probability of one month outcome declines with every one minute increase in CPR time. One month survival rate reduced from 37% to 5% after 20 minutes of CPR. Moreover, 20 minutes after CPR, the rate of favorable neurological outcome decreased from 22% to 2%. None of the patients who received CPR for more than 53 minutes survived. This slide shows the cumulative proportion of survivors with, and survivors with favorable neurological outcomes. More than 90% of survivors and survivors with favorable neurological out outcome achieved uh, after 20 minutes of CPR ROSC. More than 99% of cases with survivor and favorable neurological outcome only received 35 minutes of CPR. CPR beyond 35 minutes provided minimum benefits 
in terms of outcome. In conclusion, I wish to present the following two main points. First, the likelihood of survival with favorable neurological outcome declined with a bit one minute increase in CPR time after out of hospital cardiac arrest. This implies CPR duration is a crucial factor in determining whether a patient will return to a normal life. Second, to achieve maximum survival and favorable neurological outcome, EMS personnel should administer at least 35 minutes pre-hospital CPR for a patient with out-of-hospital cardiac arrest. This implies if the EMS personnel stopped CPR after 30 minutes, they have done everything they can do for a patient. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, these are very interesting results uh, regarding the huge number of patients you have in the series, regarding the, the, the fact that it has been collected in the recently times. And um, I would be surprised to see no question about this. Should be stop after 35 minutes? Uh, Alessandro, some, some comments? First of all, I must congratulate you on this uh, analysis. It's really interesting. And uh, it, it is a real clinical dilemma uh, when to stop uh, after uh, cardiac arrest. Um, but I think this interesting results uh, um, must be taken with caution because 35 minutes, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a cutoff. Uh, but it is a result, of, of course, on a, of an observational study. And, uh, and of course, I'm well aware of the difficulties of doing randomized studies on these kind of patients. But I would like to, uh, you to uh, give me some more clinical interpretation. How would you apply these results in clinical practice? Uh, it's a little bit difficult. <laughs> um, uh, in Japan, uh, we have a special EMS system. Because uh, we don't have a uh, termination uh, resuscitation rule in the sitting uh, where EMS personnel works. So uh, every patient uh, transported to hospital by uh, EMS system. So um, perhaps another country EMS system have another uh, limited time, uh, such as our data 35 and other uh, country have more, maybe a more longer or shorter. It is very difficult in, by the uh, EMS system. But our data shows in our system in Japan, uh, total this 35 minutes of is one is for limitation, but not further study uh, or uh, further uh, effort should be paid to uh, achieve uh, maximum survival rates, or well, of course, survival with favorable neurological outcome. That is a very important thing. Can we interpret it in a more positive way, saying that you never should stop resuscitation before 35 minutes? Oh, is that uh, right? This is a retrospective study, so uh, we uh, probably Actually, should more uh, effort, uh, more than uh, maybe uh, 30, uh, 53 minutes, and and so on. Some cases were 60 or more hours. Uwe, some comments? It's a difficult to task and uh, should, should be interesting by the, by the public to, to know. Uh, yeah, these are very important results because we face this problem uh, in, in every the hospital day. every day. Mm. And uh, if you look for the uh, younger population, because clearly, for me, if a patient is uh, 80 plus, then I would not go for an hour of uh, CPR. But in the in the very young, uh, did, did, do the results uh, change? Are they better if you prolong resuscitation? Uh, in child case, I, I have experienced uh, very long cases for uh, survive one month after cardiac arrest with favorable neurological outcome. Yeah. In that case, it will be a more longer time paid every effort. So age is not a limitation, I think. Mm. I think that, that's a problem. There are cases mm. where we certainly say, oh, we try everything we have, and yeah. uh, 
I'm not sure if 35 minutes in these cases is really enough. That's a question from the audience. Sir, please. There's a microphone coming to you, please. Yeah, uh, Daniel Kosciuta from Slovenia. Uh, just one question, um, since we are talking about time. Um, would you comment on the fact that uh, recently there has been some evidence about using ECMO or other mechanical support during resuscitation, although we are talking about pre-hospital uh, CPR? Uh, in Japan, uh, uh, there are many papers concerning uh, extra corporate circulation data, and that's a, a tremendous uh, good effort. <laughs> and uh, uh, of course, some of the patients will include this uh, data, but the pricey, uh, pricey data, how, how many people were included in this uh, study, well, I, I can't understand precisely. I think this is a very relevant and a very good question, and it is addressed by the last speaker of this press conference. We, who will, she will give you an update uh, on where we are over there and what their results are, and they're very interesting as well. So I would propose that we keep this question in your pocket and we phrase it again for the last presentation. Okay. Okay, if we don't forget it, right. 